Product provided by Nintendo. The Nintendo Switch OLED model is out, but should you upgrade if you already are an existing Switch owner? Or pay the extra $50 from a Nintendo Switch Basic, or $150 from a Switch Lite if this is your first purchase in the Switch family of systems? Sit down as through this video we'll give you a clear answer on the system and new dock, and in return we would appreciate if you liked the video for the effort put into it. And if you really liked it, subscribe plus press that notification bell as I have a surprise at the end of the video. The biggest difference between the Switch OLED and the Nintendo Switch Basic lies in the name itself. The OLED, or if you prefer, OLED model, since here we have a clear contrast both in display quality and bezel space. The Nintendo Switch OLED sports a Samsung 7 inches 720p OLED touchscreen display, an upgrade from the 6.2 inches Switch 2017 and 2019 720p LCD display, and is 1.5 inches larger than the Switch Lite 720p LCD display. The OLED display offers far greater image depth with its vivid mode and is the upgrade that together with the reduced bezel makes this a great improvement from the other two displays. Yes, there is the potential issue of burning on the OLED display, but only if you play the same game and areas over and over again in long sessions. If you switch, no pun intended, between games or are sure to turn off the switch so it doesn't stay in the menu for too long, then it shouldn't be an issue. With that in mind, the display category goes no doubt to the OLED model, which simply works better, whatever the handheld situation may be. So in a way, the Nintendo Switch OLED is the first upgrade that can actually be felt on the outside while still being able to dock the system. Sorry Nintendo Switch Lite, but your lower price comes with the biggest disadvantage of them all. No switching. At least you have the by far smallest packaging in the family. Speaking of, what is the difference in packaging between the Switch and OLED model? Around a quarter. Packaging definitely goes to the OLED model as a hybrid. So let's get back to the exterior of the system. And what else can we talk about other than tabletop mode? Oh, I forgot the Switch Lite doesn't have a built-in one, so this will be the first of multiple battles between the hybrids alone. The Switch Basics kickstand has since 2017 been a poorly designed unstable mess that has one standing position, and this one collapses with the slightest of motion. In this regard, the Nintendo Switch OLED's wide adjustable stand allows you to play in whatever angle you prefer, and with proper stability when pulling out the white Joy-Cons or Pro Controller of your choice for some tailored undocked action. In other words, the stand category goes to the Nintendo Switch OLED model. Next we have the included button layout and size of these. And this one is actually very brief, since both the Switch OLED and Switch Basic use the same detachable Joy-Cons, which are not better than the unibody Nintendo Switch Lite, as it has bigger and better action buttons and a classic Nintendo D-pad. So here we have a category that goes to the smallest member of the family, the Nintendo Switch Lite. But not for long, as when it comes to the analog sticks, well, the entire family suffers of potential drifting, but if the condition occurs, you can still continue to play on your Switch OLED and Switch Basic while sending in the impacted Joy-Con. With the Nintendo Switch Lite as a unibody handheld, not so much. And though it has arguably better analog sticks than the Joy-Cons, it also lacks HD rumble and IR camera functionality. So here we have a shared win for the hybrids, but the camaraderie between the two ends when it comes to the weight of the three family members. The Nintendo Switch OLED with Joy-Cons attached weighs 0.93 pounds or 420 grams. The Nintendo Switch on the other hand weighs 0.8 pounds or 398 grams, while the Nintendo Switch Lite only weighs 0.61 LBS, that being pounds, or 275 grams. In this category, I think we'll make a podium. Gold to Nintendo Switch Lite, Silver to Switch Basic and Bronze to Switch OLED. But naturally, bigger size means more weight, so let's go over the measurements the height and width of the Nintendo Switch OLED and basic models is the same. 4 inches or 102mm and 0.55 inches or 13.9mm. However, what differs slightly is the horizontal length, as the Nintendo Switch OLED model is 9.5 inches or 242mm long when Joy-Cons are attached, while the Switch Basic is 9.4 inches or 239mm long. 0.1 inches or 3 millimeters might not make a big difference when you play in handheld mode or place your Switch in a regular Switch case, but that is until you attach your Switch, with or without Joy-Cons, to an accessory. The Switch OLED will, for instance, not fit your Satisfy Grips or Fixture S1 Pro Controller handheld grip without causing damage to your brand new OLED model or your accessory. This is something all of us who own a Nintendo Switch should be aware of. We can still attach Joy-Con replacement controllers on our OLED without any issues, but not accessories which are made for the 9.4 inches or 239mm Switch Basic. 
Know that with the accessories added to the mix, if you're an existing Switch owner, you should really consider whether you need a purchase of the OLED if you love your Switch grips, Fixture S1 and other Nintendo Switch accessories that the OLED might not fit. And in that case, we are obviously talking about third-party Switch accessories. Meanwhile, for handheld mode and with no tabletop mode, it is possible that the Switch Lite may be the best fit as it is far shorter horizontally with its 8.2 inches or 208mm length and 3.6 inches 91.1mm height. Smaller or bigger, there's no definitive winner here, or answer for that matter, but definitely an issue with some third-party accessories when it comes to the Nintendo Switch OLED model. Now I'm almost ready to move over to the internal matches. But first, let's go over the build of each family member. And by that I mean the sturdiness and overall quality of the encasing of all the components found inside. Let's be honest, the 2017 and 2019 Nintendo Switch was not encased with premium materials. Meaning that over time and with active use, in and out of the dock, you could end up with a nasty crack, like on the back of mine day one 2017 Nintendo Switch. The Nintendo Switch Lite was a step in the right direction, as it had to be more sturdy as a dedicated handheld you play for the most part outside. But yeah, boy. the Nintendo Switch OLED model destroys the rest of the family here. It just feels more solid and with better materials. So I wonder why doesn't Nintendo mention this crucial difference in build quality on their website or in general marketing, since this is a big deal. Okay, over to battery life, as Nintendo Switch Lite has with its 3 to 7 hours and 4 hours of Breath of the Wild play shorter battery life than the 2019 Switch Basic and 2021 Nintendo Switch OLED model. As the latest versions of the two dockable members of the family both provide the same undocked battery life, 4.5 to 9 hours and 5.5 hours when playing Breath of the Wild. In other words, there's a significant difference between the dockable systems and the not dockable one when it comes to how long you can enjoy your games handheld without pulling out your USB-C charger, which is used by all the three models. Now then, what remains is internal storage before its docking time, as all three systems offer gyroscope motion controls and SD card expansion. But they have different internal storage. 32 gigabytes versus 64 gigabytes. And I will say from experience that with a 100 plus gigabytes SD card, I've done completely fine with 32 gigabytes of internal storage on the prior models. So that is another one to the Nintendo Switch OLED before we say thank you and goodbye to the Switch Lite until we get back to the final category, since it is finally time to talk about docks. Specifically, old versus new, since you can use the OLED model in the old dock and the Switch Basic in the OLED dock. And both of these docks have advantages and disadvantages, since the OLED dock has one USB port less than the Switch Basic dock, and what is worse is that it has lost its USB port at the back. Though I guess you had to give up that one for the first Ethernet port on a Nintendo system. As for design, I would say that the wide curved dock looks and also feels better than the Switch Basic dock. Overall, despite being quite close, this one goes to the Switch OLED dock. Now, the final category, pricing. The Nintendo Switch OLED model costs 349 US dollars, with the largest and only OLED display on any Nintendo handheld systems to date. Oh, and obviously, better sound, which I completely forgot to bring up in any of the categories. In other words, there are substantial differences to the 2019 Nintendo Switch Basic model, which is $50 cheaper in the US and even more in Europe after the recent price cut. The Switch Lite is $150 cheaper, but cannot be docked, has worse battery life and build quality, much smaller display, and cannot play games easily that require detached controllers, but is way lighter and more practical than the Nintendo Switch OLED to bring with you with bigger action buttons and a D-pad. Personally, I think that if you don't have a Switch, then this is really a no-brainer. The Switch OLED should be a pick, as it will fit all kinds of situations and offer you the overall best docked and undocked experience, both in handheld and tabletop mode. If you have a light and only play handheld and continue to plan to only play handheld, stay with your light. But if you really miss TV play on it, or want to play handheld and or tabletop with a larger display, then you should definitely get the Nintendo Switch OLED model. It is no doubt the best Nintendo Switch model yet. Now, back in January, I promised that after we surpass 300,000 subscribers, I will give away a Nintendo Switch OLED model, White Edition. We still have some way to go, but yes, at 300,000 subscribers, we'll give away a Nintendo Switch OLED model, with one game for a total value of 400 US dollars. So be sure to subscribe to the Commonwealth Realm and press the notification bell and again for all notifications to bring us closer to the first goal and share plus like this video so more people can watch it and get a deep and technical comparison of the entire Nintendo Switch family of systems. Finally, a big thanks goes to all our patreon.com slash commonrealmpatrons and in particular to our roller producer Charles Shash, you rock, 
and please enjoy one or both of these two awesome videos.